Hey Darts fans, that's Timo Newman here, the transporter. Welcome to the good ship Undarted Waters. This is a spontaneous video. I was not planning to make this. It's all come about in the last 24 hours. And I'm going to keep this short as well and make a more technical version of this in the next few days for people who are interested in the details. But here's just going to be the summary. 180. We all like that chap, eh? Um, in Germany, the, uh, the new caller. Great stuff. Hey, this is all about the difference between old dartboards and the new brand of dartboards with the much thinner wires, okay? And it came about from one of our community. Um, we have someone who leaves comments, and I don't know his name, but he goes by Baron VB3752. Baron VB3752. 752. Thank you so much for inspiring this video and for helping with some of the data as well. I really appreciate it. In watching my geometry of the dartboard series, this um, this person, I don't know um, if they're male or female, but Baron uh, VB had gone and measured their dartboards and had found that the size of their treble 20 on an old dartboard, it was an old Winmore dartboard, was significantly smaller than the modern dartboard. And then Baron had gone off and found a video from the great Matthew Edgar, who is a font of wisdom about all things darts, a video that Matthew Edgar made a few years ago where he actually did very detailed measurements of an old dartboard, an MY dartboard, compared to a modern one. And what's really helpful is that the measurements that um, Baron made and the measurements that Matthew Edgar and his colleague made are very robust, they're, very, they're basically the same, and the bottom line is that the treble on the older boards is 15% smaller than the treble on the new boards, plus or minus 1%, but that's kind of the number we want to bear in mind here, 15% different. So obviously, a little bit harder to hit a treble 20 on the older boards compared to the new ones. And we can get into all of the technical details in the next video about the um, the thickness of the wires and all that kind of stuff too with bounce outs. But that reduction in area is due basically to the thickness of the wires. Now let me turn this board light off and get my whiteboard. I just want to give you the results because you might say, well, yeah, 15%, you know, that is something. But what's really important here is that that 15%, although a small difference for one dart, makes a huge difference when you start looking at combinations of trebles. And that's really the piece that I'm bringing to this party, is coming from a physics and maths background, I'm thinking, well, if there's a, if there's a small difference on one treble, what about three trebles for a 180? Or what about more trebles for a nine data? What is that snowball effect? I want to give you the results right now. So let's just fill in this old table here. So I've got various things in this table. I'm going to give you the results for, and we're comparing a retro board to a modern board. So basically a thick wire and staples board to a modern beautiful board like this Blade 6 I've got with the really thin wires, okay? And I'm going to just express it in how many times harder is it to do a certain thing. So we know, I've already said, it's basically roughly 15% harder to hit a treble on the retro board. So in terms of what the times harder is, it's 1.16. So it's 1.16 times harder to hit a treble on the old boards compared to the new ones. And I'm just putting the double here as well just because we're going to need that when we talk about nine darters, because nine darters end on a double, or the bull, okay? But I'm assuming a double for this table. So these are small, 14% harder to hit a double, 16% harder to hit a treble. That's quite small, but it all snowballs. So what about a 180, where you've got to get three treble 20s in a row, and each one is slightly harder on the retro board? What's the accumulated effect? It's 1.6 times harder, okay? 1.6 times harder. And then, 
for a nine data, you're going to get three trebles, three trebles, two trebles and a double. What is all of that snowball effect? That comes out to be 3.8 times harder. So basically, because of this snowball, this 15%, it adds up over nine successive darts where you've got to get that treble or double. On the old boards, it's four times harder to hit a nine darter compared to the new boards. Incredible. So John Lowe hit the first televised nine darter in 1984 in the world match play. And Luke Littler just this year hit a nine darter in the world match play as well. And Luke Littler has had four televised nine darters in the last two years. So on the basis of this number here, if you were being a bit cheeky, you could say, well, those four Luke Littler nine darters are about equal in difficulty altogether to John Lowe's single nine darter back in 1984, 41 years ago. So really, really interesting this. What about a 17 data? This is for 1001, not 501, but 1001. A 17 data is the best possible way to do that. To my knowledge, that's never been achieved, at least not recorded. Okay, but there you need to get, um, I think you actually need 16 trebles and a bull. And because the bull was the, roughly the same size in these dart boards, it doesn't really make any difference if you exclude the bounce outs, because those old bulls were surrounded by staples. But anyway, um, the 17 data, that is 11.0 times harder on an old board compared to a new board. So the old Vanguard from the 70s and 80s, they've got a good excuse why they never hit a 17 data. But now, nowadays, it's 11 times easier. Come on, elite players, where's that 11? Where's that... Um, 17 data, right? And the world record for 1001, um, jointly held by Cliff Inglis and Jockey Wilson, okay, the Inglis one was in 1975 and the Wilson one in 1989. I believe these were in exhibitions, okay, but they've both been verified. They're both in the Guinness Book of Records. They were 19 datas. Now, the Jockey Wilson one ended on a bull, and you can calculate that that 19 data of Jockey Wilson is 9.4 times harder on an old board compared to a new board. The Inglis one actually had two doubles in it because his first um, visit, actually, he got a 160, strangely enough. Um, so that turns out to be 12.3 times harder. So here's an enigma. These world records were set on older boards and are roughly speaking 10 times harder then than they are now. So people should be getting these set, these 19 data, so 1001, just like, uh, uh, you know, much more easily, 10 times more easily. So maybe this is a real challenge for the elite players or for the PDC to think about. Let's do some 1001 and let's get some 19 data. So let's get a 17 data. I bet someone like Gerwin Price or someone like Luke Littler these, these incredible dart players, I bet they can achieve this if there's the right, um, right incentives and the right, um, you know, kind of tournament for that to happen, okay? So I just want to say one last thing. What about three dart averages, okay? Can I hold this straight? Three dart averages. So let's say you had a player who was getting 100 for, for their per visit average, which is obviously very, very good. So this would be the, you know, the elite players. But given that necessarily involves hitting trebles, what does that equate to on the old boards? And you can actually work it out, and I can give the details in the next video on this. But it turns out to be 94.4. So this is, I think, really interesting. So when we think about 100 average today, that actually is completely equivalent, given the boards were harder years ago, to a 94 average, okay? Or you could reverse the question. You could say if someone got 100 average years ago on an old board, which is amazing, what would that be equivalent in today's money on a new board? 
and it turns out to be 106.7. But what you can see from this then is that when we compare averages from the old thick wire staple boards to modern boards, there's basically a six, a plus or minus six point difference in the per visit averages. And that's really, really important to bear in mind if we start comparing players from these two sort of different generations of darts. Okay, so the two things I want to really leave you with, uh, the two take home messages are four times harder to hit a nine darter on the old boards than it is today, which really makes us appreciate the John Lowe achievement and what an amazing video there is that you can find online of that fantastic nine dart average, sorry, nine data that he got, beg your pardon. And the other take home message is there's a six point difference in the per visit averages if they're around 100, okay? So we really have to take that into account if we compare darts records and scoring across the generations. So with that, I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. We get three darts at the Oki, make them count, and I'll see you next time.